Hi guys, welcome back to another video for Charm Customs. I'm Genevieve, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to prep Air Force Ones for painting. So, not only are we gonna be prepping the leather, but we're gonna be removing the smoosh, <laughs> removing the swoosh, and painting the sole. So, the, painting the sole, it's really important to have the proper prep work done because if you don't prep it properly, it'll chip so quickly. Um, but with the right love and attention and time, we can try and keep this on for as long as possible. So I am actually self-taught. So all of this is things that, tips and tricks that I learned through trial and error, as well as through my friends in the shoe community and even on YouTube. So I hope that you guys will learn a lot from this and I hope that you will leave your tips and tricks that I missed or don't even know about yet in the comments so that I can learn from you too. If you wanna see more of the type of stuff I'm making, check out my Instagram or my TikTok. It's at Charm Customs. Thank you guys so much and let's get started. The main ingredient here are the Air Force Ones. You can also use Jordans or Doc Martens or any other leather shoe. But here specifically, I'm gonna be talking about Air Force Ones. A lot of these techniques will go over to another type of leather shoe as well. But we wanna make sure that we're not using a canvas shoe like Converse, Vans. That's all I can think of right now, but don't use those because this is a leather prep video. The type of prep work that goes into canvas shoes is completely different. Next on our list of ingredients, we have cotton balls. I like to get the jumbo size. Then latex gloves. You have to use latex. If you have a latex allergy, I don't know what your other option is, but acetone will go through non-latex materials much quicker, so latex it is. Then we have acetone, which is the reason for the most part that we're gonna be using latex gloves. Get 100% acetone, nail polish remover, whatever. Just make sure it's 100%. Sandpaper, use a finer grit for the leather and a coarser grit for the sole. The next few items are only really necessary if you plan on removing the swoosh. So an X-Acto blade, Tweezers, I like to use flat tip tweezers for removing the stitching. They're just way easier than using needle nose tweezers for this purpose. Liquid Kicks Inner Coat, Inter Coat, is a great product for filling the little holes left by the swoosh. White paint, brushes, you'll want broader brushes for this. Have a decent one and one that you don't mind getting a little messed up. Now for prep work, if you plan on painting the sole, you're gonna want some Rally Restoration Scratch Resistant Sealer, Adhesion Promoter, Neutral Paint by Angelus. I used to think this was useless until I started painting soles and now I have so much of it. All right, here we go. Let's start by removing the laces and putting them somewhere out of harm's way where we will not lose them and will not get paint on them. If you plan on removing the swoosh, make sure that you're removing the correct one. You don't want to accidentally remove the inner swoosh when you meant to leave it um, because it is unsightly and very difficult to get back on unless you have an industrial sewing machine. Take your X-Acto blade, ensuring you have no oil and rust on the blade, and begin to carefully start cutting the stitching around the edges of the swoosh. And then once you've cut the tip of the swoosh, you can start to lift it up and slice underneath the swoosh, and it's so much faster, and you'll just right through. But make sure the blade is angled upwards towards you and not towards the shoe so that if you cut anything that's not stitching, you're cutting the underside of the swoosh and not the leather of the shoe. Once you get to the next part of the leather, I want you to be very careful. Some sizes, I've noticed that large men's sizes have a single piece of leather, but the majority of shoes 
have two pieces sewn together underneath this swoosh. So be really careful not to cut that stitching. I want you to go really slow here and just try your best not to cut that stitching. Then I just saw away at the leather of the swoosh until it comes free. And now I have a swoosh. <laughs> this part is truly my least favorite of the whole ordeal. It gives me the worst hand cramps and takes forever. But basically, you're just going to want to start pulling the threads out of the shoe until there's none left. And your hand will cry about it. Great. Now that that is finally out of the way comes the second most horrible and tedious part of prepping shoes, we're going to want to start sanding. So I like to sand around these holes to make it a bit smoother, avoid the stitching, of course. And in the areas where a lot of creasing tends to happen, because the paint will just sort of stick a little bit better. It's not really necessary anywhere else. Some people do it other places on the shoe, on the whole shoe, but I do not. Um, yeah, so for this, let's use a finer grit. And then when it comes to the sole, we're going to want to use a very coarse grit. I actually use this plate that I found in my mom's garage. I believe it's meant for a motor powered sanding machine. I don't know what they're called, but I think it works the best for the soles. I like using it. I am just making it the size I want. And like I said, avoid stitching. If you sand the stitching, it's going to look terrible no matter what you do. Do not sand the stitching. Just sand lightly until you get a bit of dust. Some people sand until they get to the gray, which so underneath the white of the paint is the gray base of the leather. That isn't necessary, but if you're kind of paranoid or just very, very patient, you can go for it. I would like to make it clear that sanding is in no way a necessary step. It is completely optional. A lot of customizers don't do it. A lot of customizers do. It's up to you. However, sanding for the soul is actually completely necessary if you plan on painting the soul. If you're going to paint the sole and you don't take the necessary precautions and steps to prep it properly, it's going to chip within minutes. It has no chance of lasting. It's still going to chip uh, no matter what, you know, it's a shoe. But doing this is going to last for a significantly longer amount of time. Now it's time to put on our leather gloves so that we can start cleaning the shoe with acetone and removing the factory finish. This is the part that is necessary whether you're removing the swoosh, not removing the swoosh, painting the soles, not painting the soles. No matter what you're doing, what kind of shoe you're using, this is a necessary step. So wet your cotton ball with acetone and just rub it up on your shoe. You're going to start to get white paint coming off of the shoe onto the cotton ball. This is a good sign. It means you're removing the factory finish and doing what you are trying to do. So you're going to know when you're finished, when the shoe starts to feel a little bit squeaky and kind of sticky to the touch. Make sure that you've removed all the debris and powder that you created from sanding if you did sand as well. Just for a frame of reference, this is what I'm left with after cleaning the two outer sides of the shoe. This is what a prepped versus unprepped shoe sounds like. <laughs> Clean up any loose ends with some scissors. Take your intercoat on a decent brush and start painting in all the little holes where the swoosh once was. I like to try and go over 
all that threading too so that I can try and make it look a little bit less noticeable. Let it dry in between coats and then do three or four coats until the holes are fully filled. Now take your white paint and go over the same area you were just going over. This hides the holes and makes it like there was nothing ever there. Now for the soles, just take a Q-tip, some adhesion promoter, which I just sprayed into this pill bottle, which by the way, I will not be using anymore because it's probably poisonous. And then just put adhesion promoter on the sole of the shoe, wherever you're gonna be painting. Pretty much as soon as you have the adhesion promoter on, you're gonna take your neutral and you're gonna put it all over wherever you put the adhesion promoter. You wanna put it on within three minutes of applying the adhesion promoter. And this just gives you a great base to lay your paint down that's gonna really adhere to the sole of the shoe. Congrats, you've prepped your shoe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Charm Customs and tag me in whatever your finished piece is. I'd love to see what you guys are working on. Thanks for watching.